guests. I'll start with Sana Suyev, human rights advocate. You have the floor for seven minutes. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I know you expect me to talk about my experience and about my brother, but I would like to first start and uh, uh, to talk about climate. Um, let me start by telling you the story of a small Egyptian town called Itku. Itku's land and water has for years suffered from pollution by nearby sewage canals and a liquid gas LNG export plant. As part of a, a large project owned by British Petroleum and German company, oil company RWE, they wanted to expand and build a new, another new gas plant on Itku's beach, but the local community was tired of their sea being polluted by large corporations. So in 2013, the local community stood up and in spite of state resistance, they managed to force the oil companies to reroute their proposed pipelines. They went to demonstrations, they protested. The effect of the victory rippled out and communities in another town nearby called Motobas were inspired by their neighbors to pick up the fight. But then a couple of months later, a vicious military coup happened and CC came to power and the whole country was forced to shut up. We don't know what happened to the fishermen of Itku. All we know is that in 2019, the government announced that both Italian company INI and British Petroleum are going to expand their projects off Itku's shores. Two years later, a large fire broke out in a gas pipeline in Itku uh, during its pilot operation. No casualties were reported, the cause of fire was never announced, and there is no room to investigate the environmental impact on the local community. Why? Because researchers get arrested and they die in Egyptian prisons. Egypt is responsible for over a third of total methane gas consumption in Africa, and we are the continent's second largest gas producer, with plans to increase. Yet somehow we were chosen to champion Africa in the conversation about climate change. What does that say about our priorities towards the planet we live in? While our government claims to adopt green energy, we're scaling up oil and gas production. We liquefy natural gas to send to you in Europe. Egypt's overall climate targets and policies are rated as highly insufficient, according to the Climate Action Tracker. The targets we adopted are not consistent with the Paris Agreement's objective. The report also uh, says, the Climate Action Tracker report, says that Egypt could easily achieve its weak emission targets today without introducing any new policies, which raises the question of why aren't we then not reaching those targets? Our government issued a new 2050 national climate change strategy, but the full document is not publicly available. Why? What is the carbon footprint of the Egyptian military's mega project? What is the carbon footprint of Sisi's new capital? Why are trees being removed all over the city of Cairo? As an Egyptian, there is no way, not in my wildest dreams, that I could imagine a local climate activist raising such concerns in the next conference in COP27. Not because they wouldn't want to, but because they can't. Every Egyptian you will meet in Sharm el Sheikh will be vetted or intimidated beforehand. You need to have that in mind while going to COP. The only reason I'm able to address these concerns is firstly, we're not having this conversation in Egypt. And secondly, because I'm already doomed with the label of human rights activist. So I basically have nothing to lose. I've served three prison sentences. My brother is in prison. He's on an open-ended hunger strike. He's been on a partial hunger strike for over 200 days. His lawyer is in prison with him. His lawyer went to attend to represent him in prosecution and they put him on the same case alongside a journalist, Mohammed Ibrahim, the journalist, and Mohammed Bokr, the lawyer, and my brother, Ali Abdel Fattah, are right now languishing in prison. So that's why I'm able to address these concerns because I have nothing to lose. My point is you can't shy away from addressing the human rights crisis with the excuse of because you're going to talk about climate. These causes are intersectional. <clears throat> 
if you are serious about caring for the planet, you need to boldly adopt human rights. The, human the climate crisis is not about the planet. The planet will outlive us all. The climate crisis is about life on the planet, and life in Egypt right now, as we speak, is very dangerous. There are 103 million in Egypt who are becoming poorer, less literate, and more vulnerable every year. There are tens of thousands of political prisoners. Most of them will be materially worse off if the world simply flies into COP27, shakes some hands, makes some investments in green hydrogen, and flies off again. So what can you do if you are going to COP in our own city, elite resort as it is? Your delegations can be our representatives. We need you to raise human rights concerns. We need you to push your governments to raise human rights concerns, to push for a prisoner's amnesty, especially since many of you represent governments that benefit from and empower our oppression. We need your delegations to raise the human rights crisis at every level. We need your plenaries to mention the human rights crisis. Uh, crisis in Egypt. The human rights crisis in Egypt is not inevitable. Ale does not have to stay in prison. Ale can be easily saved. My brother does not have to die in prison. My brother can be saved. Yesterday, a um, very high profile political prisoner was released. So pressure works. I am uh, a proof of that. Rami is a proof of that. Pressure does work. We need you to raise your voice when engaging with the Egyptian authorities at every level. Thank you. Thank you, Sana. Uh, so